the Gran Turismo license tests. Maybe the most love-hate feature of the series. Some people can't wait to get them out of the way, while others love to grind away trying to get the very best times they're capable of. But on Gran Turismo 2, there is value to be found beyond the likes of improving your times and unlocking price cars. In this video, we're going to delve deeper into the secrets that lie within the license tests of Gran Turismo 2. I hope you enjoy watching. Okay, so first up, we're going to look at a couple of tests within the International Sea License. This is IC5, a run through the chicane at Red Rock Valley, with a pretty strict time limit. IC6 is similar. The difference between this test and the last being that you have to drive around the right hand after the chicane as well. The time limit is a lot more forgiving too. If we use a no clip code that allows us to go beyond the boundaries of the first test, IC5, we can actually see that the finish line from IC6 is there as well. So it seems like the devs built the longer test first, then duplicated it for the shorter test and just added in the other finish line. Also, if you go beyond the tyre barrier after the finish line, we can see that the track does carry on a short way before it runs out. However, we can still see some of the trackside objects like the stands, lights and buildings. There is also a version of this test that goes unused in the game. It's identical to the test that is used, except for its name, which is Billboard Check. It was absent from the Japanese version of the game, but can be found among the files of the North American versions. Due to its name, people have theorised that it was used for testing the game's dynamic billboards feature. There are license tests on other circuits as well, and we can also venture beyond their finish lines. There are a couple of tests set on midfield, and like we saw with Red Rock Valley, if we go beyond the finish line, we can see that the circuit itself peters out while objects in the scenery remain. So, are there any exceptions to this rule? Well, two spring to mind. The first is the 10th license test of the International Sea License. This features a section of Seattle circuit where you're driving a Chevrolet Corvette Grand Sport 96. Again, we can use a no-clip code to see what lies beyond the license test's finish line. It might surprise you to know that you can actually drive a lap of the full Seattle circuit. And you might be wondering why you'd want to do this when you can just drive around Seattle normally. Well, let me explain and let me show you. You see, the circuit itself extends beyond the tyre barrier at the end of the license test. But it has no scenery and even elements of the track itself, such as the curbs, are not even present. So what we have is like a reverse version of what we saw in Midfield and Red Rock Valley, where the scenery is missing but the track exists. And we can actually drive a full lap with the no clip code active. But it seems to work best when I turn it off and on to get through the tyre barriers, and some invisible barriers as well. Overall this is quite a surreal experience, although we do start to see more elements of the scenery once we come back around to the beginning of the license test.
there are also a couple of license tests that take place on the Rome circuit. For example, the ninth test of the International Sea License. I remember this test being really difficult when I was younger. In fact, if you weren't aware, on the European version of the game, the demonstration only gets silver, it doesn't even get gold. And the demo is supposed to show you how it's done. Anyway, like the Seattle license test, the circuit also extends beyond the tyre barrier at the end of the test section. What's more interesting about this one is that it seems to be a really early version of Rome. I think it's probably wrong to say that it's unfinished. I think unstarted might actually be a better word. I assume the game's devs made the area for the license test, then just blocked out the rest of the circuit. As a result, you have the layout of the track itself with these strange green walls at either side of you. As with Seattle, more scenery starts to appear once you're near the start and finish lines of the license test area. I also found that at least two of the license tests don't actually have tyre barriers beyond the finish lines. There's one at Smoky Mountain which is used in the first test of the International B license. And another Red Rock Valley test used in the ninth test of the International B license. When you use a code to modify which track loads for any race or championship on the game, you can tell the game to load one of the license tests which means we can go beyond the finish line, as we've seen in the previous footage in the video. You can go beyond the finish line because, for some reason, it doesn't count as the finish in a race. It just counts as the first sector. So when you pass the finish line in these two tests, there's no tyre barrier to stop you from going further. So you can go right up to where the track just... ends. And you're left facing an abyss. There's one more thing worth mentioning before we move on to the purpose-built license tests. There are a few tests set on test course, you know the ones. The stop and start tests where you accelerate before breaking to a standstill. When you load this license test as the location for a race, for some reason you don't start in the same place. Instead you actually start out of bounds and when you try to enter the course, you just get yeeted into the air. There are a lot of tests on the game that are purpose-built, meaning that they're not sections of playable tracks. They're made for the license tests themselves. If you've ever wondered what was beyond the finish lines of tests like these, well, some of them end abruptly, sadly. But some of them do have a little bit more road that goes beyond the finish line and the tyre barrier. So if you ever thought that they joined back up with the start line, or they all formed like one big track somehow, well, sadly that's not the case. Although if we use a track modifier code to drive these license tests in races rather than as tests, the game does have mini-maps for them all in the bottom left hand corner of the hood. All the mini-maps show the license tests apparently looping back around and joining up with the start line. However, if we go out of bounds we can see that the extra section of circuit just doesn't sadly exist. But maybe there's an exception. There's another cut license test. One that only appears on the second North American release of the game. And it's called Checker. 
It appears to be a duplicate of the S turn segment found in numerous tests. A7, A8, IB3 and IB4. We can only assume why it was developed so late and what it was for. I assume it was for testing something because as I say, it doesn't actually feature in the game's license tests. Anyway, the special thing about Checker is that it does in fact loop around and form a complete circuit. Going beyond the end of the test, we can see that there's a long left-hand turn, followed by a tighter left-hander. The driving line also continues all the way around, as does the grass, the barriers, everything. There are two circular courses that can also be found on the license tests, Circle 30 and Circle 80. Circle 30 appears on test B4, featuring the Nissan Micra or March, while Circle 80 can be found in test B5. The interesting thing about these two tests is that, like many of the tests, there is basic AI pathfinding, by which I mean the opposition cars can find their way around the circuit but they'll just all drive in a train, there's no overtaking happening. But I think it works best with these two tracks in particular, as you can actually have a little race on them both. With the linear license test, you're all just going to be butting into the tyre barrier at the end, unable to progress any further. But at least the grid positions on these two tracks make some kind of sense. On most of the license tracks, because you're never supposed to be able to race on them, there is usually only one starting position implemented, which is the players for the test itself. It's worth noting as well that some license tests have rolling stars and therefore do not have fixed grid positions. However, when you load the tests as races, you do actually start on a grid. Anyway, so when loading a six car race on one of these tracks, all six cars start in the same position, all inside one another, causing chaos to ensue once the race begins. There are exceptions though, perhaps most notably, a license test named L U-Turn R, which is based on tests B8 and A3. There are still two cars that start in the same place, one of them being the player's car, but the others are more spread out. Two start just in front of the tyre barrier. One starts inside the tyre barrier, which causes it to ultimately fly off into the air and the final grid position is actually behind the tyre barrier, meaning that the last AI car can't even get into the circuit to participate in the race. There are two slalom license tests on Gran Turismo 2 as well, used in tests IB6 and IB8. The test used in IB6 is the shorter of the two, one where the tyre barriers are placed at 20 metre intervals. The test used in IB8 places the tyre barriers at 40 metre intervals, which may sound easier, but you're also driving a faster car. Within the files of Gran Turismo 2, there exists early versions of both the 20 metre and 40 metre slalom tests, which are unused in the game. Instead of saying start and finish on the banners above the track, they say checkpoint instead. Also, the tyre barriers are blue and white, whereas on the final version of the tests, they alternate between red and white and blue and yellow.
What's more interesting is that there also exists an unused slalom test called Test 30, which is a slalom course with the tyre barriers placed at 30 metre intervals. So it seems like at one point, the game's developers were going to give us three slalom based license tests, but we ended up with just two. This is good in my opinion, as I actually hate doing these tests. There's also one more unused slalom course, and it's called L20. I assume the 20 in the track's name refers to the tyre barriers being placed at 20 metre intervals again. The strange thing about this cut licence test is that everything bar the scenery is invisible. The minimap does show that the track is just a straight line, and you can actually crash into the tyre barriers as well. So they are there, but you just can't see them. It also has grass at each side of the track too, likely due to the fact that the minimap shows a straight line. This unused license test became a part of the mythology around the also cut drag mode on Gran Turismo 2. People assumed it was originally going to be a drag strip, but sadly this wasn't the case. Another license test that played into the drag mode mythology was a test that's used on IA3. It's set at Apricot Hill, but the internal file name of this license test is called El Plam. The name Plam Strip appears in the game's intro movie on the arcade mode disc, and again people assumed that this was the name of a cut drag strip, and was a misspelling of Palm Strip. In fact, on the European version of the game, the license test actually still mentions Palm Strip. In fact, Plam was a misspelling of Plum and Plum Strip was the original name for Apricot Hill Speedway, before it was subsequently changed. Of course, you can see the similarity between Plum and Apricot. I actually made a full video about the game's drag race mode leftovers in conjunction with Odd Header, so I'll link that in the description if you want to learn more. Anyway, we have a few more license tests to round up before the end of the video. There's a test called Super Fast Corners which is used in two tests in the International A license on test 2 and test 10. The first test uses the TVR Griffith, and the second test uses the Toyota GT198. It's something I've mentioned previously on the channel, but this section of the track was actually inspired by the Eau Rouge and Radion sections of Spa Francorchamps. Although you certainly can't take it flat in Gran Turismo 2, the camera of the corners feels very different and makes the last left hander quite tricky. But still, we wouldn't drive the full spa course until Gran Turismo 5, yet we unknowingly drove a portion of it back on GT2. As I mentioned, this license test is called Super Fast Corners. There was also intended to be a Super Fast Corners 2, but this test ended up being cut. But the track still exists within the files of the game. According to the Cutting Room Floor website, it shares the same assets and camera angles as the unused slalom courses, including the glitchy textures you can see at the start and finish lines. There is also another cut license test that remains in the game files named Test L1, which is an L-shaped right turn. There is an L-shaped left turn used in tests A5 and A6. This cut test seems to be a right-hand version of the same test. However, the two courses use different scenery and also use different start and finish banners. Lastly, we come to probably the most famous cut license test in the game, Dart Test 2, which is more commonly known as the Secret Track. I actually posted my first video on this hidden circuit back in 2011 but never really explained anything about it. But yes, this cut track was originally intended to be one of the game's license tests. It has no AI logic, no scenery, and uses an early version of Red Rock Valley Skybox, I believe. Also, most of its sectors are placed right before the finish line, while the first sector encompasses the majority of the circuit. We don't really know why it's called Dart Test, but the word dart suggests a succession of rapid turns, although a lot of the corners are actually slow hairpins. However, there were other short license tracks on the demos that were like this one. 
but the idea was scrapped completely it seems. Instead we get the short linear license test we see on GT2. Anyway, that concludes some of the more interesting things about Gran Turismo 2's license tests. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.